Okay, so this is kind of um, how first order is first order logic, symbiosis part two. So this is looking at using symbiosis. Different, different. It's really about symbiosis. Okay, so uh, there's a dogma uh, that's very fundamental in logic, and this is that the first order, second order distinction is ironclad. That this is a steel wall between two uh, very, very, very different. But if you look at the history, um, so, and, and if you look at the, say, the 1930s, 1920s, when the set theory the paradigm actually emerges, it's kind of an interesting test case. So it's probably known to everybody in this room, early workers and foundations generally use higher order systems. But they gradually abandoned the tomato first order, first order set theory. Wilfred Hodges has a very beautiful paper online um, where he talks about the transition, at least in Tarski's early work, from simple type theory to informal set theory. He says this was uh, in place by 1935. So the axioms for real closed field, this is regarded as a definition of good set theory. Also, a wall uh, Gödel in 1933 describes the higher order provenance, origins of first order set theory. That is to say, the fact that set theory lends itself to being viewed in a natural way as a higher order system. So here he says it may seem as if another solution were afforded by the system of axioms for set theory, as presented by Bernard, Franklin, and von Neumann. But it turns out that this system of axioms is nothing else but a natural generalization of the theory of types, or rather it is what becomes of the theory of types if certain superfluous restrictions are removed. So for example, four elements, four elements, and then there'll be a rest of them. Just fill the reason I can see. Okay. And a similar point, Yoko makes a similar point in a paper of his on second order logic. First order logic is merely the result of extending second order logic to transpine and be high. So that's what this is. So first order yeah. that theory rather the first order logic. You said first yeah. logic, but it says first order logic. Step theory, sorry. Yeah. Look at me, students are usually confused. <laughs> It is confusing. It is confusing. First order theory, but you don't have yeah. other parts. I had, um, when I was a graduate student, and there were all these Venice Sullivan students running around who were very interested in foundations. I had a three hour argument with uh, uh, one of them. Uh, he just refused to see that set theory as a first theory. Uh, Adam, uh, Adam has been very, very gifted uh, mathematician. And, uh, you know, for years, I, I thought to myself, gee, Adam, Adam was really brilliant, but he just didn't get that. And then I thought, wait a minute, <laughs> Adam was right. <laughs> so this talk is, you know, Adam, Adam was, the so set theory has a double, double nature. Okay. So uh, there's some tension in what the phrase first order real as in first order logic really means. It's it's clear, I hope, especially after the last talk, what it means for a model class to be first order definable. It means there's a first order formula in the language of set theory, <coughs> the membership in the class, and as in K, you can only have M satisfies that, that formula. Uh, no, sorry, there's a first order formula phi. Yeah. Yeah, here, here I want to talk about theoretical possibility. Here I want to talk about just a first order of formula. So uh, as, as we said last time, K being merely a model class means from the point of view of set theory, not this situation, this situation, there's a first order formula in the language of set theory, perhaps a parameter, so that membership in the class. But don't you 
as, as I just said, from the point of view of the natural, the quantification is second order. From the point of view of the real, it's first order. So this next idea of context. Okay. Klein made a related point in his philosophy of logic. So this is the, I think it's what, 1970? You should go. You better go to Pittsburgh. That actually has a chapter heading called Wolves in Sheep's Clothing. Uh, he says that using second order predicate symbols of schematic letters, this masks the step here in content of second order. So he advocated just go ahead and use the epsilon relation, right? Forget about second order. Yeah. Okay, so um, as I say, I'm trying to make you sensitive to the idea that this ambiguity of the phrase first order. Uh, there are other ways uh, in which uh, the notion is ambiguous. There's a whole spectrum of logics which extend first order logic in the sense of one, first order definability, but are sub logics of first order logic in the sense that first order this appears in the step periodic definition. And if you recall that table, which I will show you that table again, right, that also illustrates. Okay, so again, I'm going to talk about an abstract logic. As I told you already, an abstract logic consists <clears throat> of a set and a binary relation. The set is uh, thought of as uh, sentences or formulas, and then binary relation is thought of as a two predicate. Such predicates are given in set theory by first order. So this is this idea defining every model class we can find Okay, so in first order logic plus the epsilon relation, one can define every model. Speaking of logic plus epsilon, this is one of my favorite quotes from the history of logic. So in the early 1940s, Van Kosu has written, written a paper about this and also uh, published the conversation. <laughs> Carnap, thank goodness for Carnap, he was a great note taker. He took notes, for example, uh, in the summer of 1930, talking to Gero about incompleteness and the essential creativity of mathematics and the unprovability of consistency and so forth. Extraordinary. He also took notes of Tarski, Carnap, and Klein. Uh, met at Harvard in 1941, uh, and they were trying to come up with a physicalistic language for science. Very, very funny if you think of Tarski. He was kind of all over the place philosophically, but this was the project then. Right? Find a nominalistic, obviously, physicalistic language for science. So, as part of that project, they had to think about well, what is not what is a mathematical concept? What is a logical concept? So Tarski <clears throat> had this kind of mantra, mathematics is logic plus epsilon. <laughs> okay. Yeah. In, in, by the way, when I heard this first, I thought that it is like a, a little bit of logic, mm -hmm. but it means the epsilon relation. Indeed. Yeah, Indeed. So, uh, I yeah. misunderstood. It doesn't mean logic plus a tiny bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Plus an error. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so typical example of the definability of every logic in uh, set theory. So uh, uh, if I have a class of finite models of some vocabulary, this is a consequence of the Wagner theorem that is this is no first order sentence. Will define that class, but of course, this is easily definable. Okay, so uh, finite is the non first order defined. <coughs> so here's the question I'm asking this is the end of my introduction. What does first order mean after all if first order logic can appear in such different roles as uh, one and two that I showed at the beginning? I should the handout for you, so you can refer to that. But anyway, this was the point, first order of definability, and this is the subsidiary of definability. 
Okay, so I want to suggest that the distinction between first order and higher order logic, first of all, it's a little bit unstable, it's a little bit blurry, and also it's somewhat context dependent. So from the philosophical or foundational point of view, this complicates the picture of first order logic as a phenomenon. That's the frame I want to make. Very heretical claim. People get very upset, <laughs> including the editor of this volume. Okay. Barwise uh, pinned the canonicity of a logic to its absolute. So here's a quote. What is it reasonable for us as I on to call a logic first order? If the words first order have any intuitive content, it is that the truth or falsity of satisfaction, model satisfying the formula, it should only depend upon phi and m, not on what subsets m may or may subsets of m may or may not exist in the logician's model of this. In other words, the satisfaction relation should be absolute. So that was a marker of canonical. Okay. Now, um, and as I said before, the absoluteness, I believe I said this in the previous talk, the absoluteness of a logic means that it's set theoretically. This definition is absolute in the usual set theory. Or if you like, the satisfaction predicate of the one in the Levy hierarchy and the property of, of belonging to the to the synthesis is sigma. Okay. So the idea is that essentially a logic is absolute if the truth of a sentence in an L structure, uh, sentence of an L but L depends only on the elements of the domain. Not on what kind of subsets it has. So that's first order, according to Barber. Or I should, yeah, that's first order, and is um, another word is, is um, okay. So the problem is if you if you're trying to sharpen your notion of first order, absoluteness isn't going to help you because there are many absolute non-first order logic sets. So this is infinitely many quantifier. This is uh, negative balance. Uh, quantifier, or infinity omega chain quantifier. There are many absolute logic. So you will not single out first order logic. Use absolute. Okay. So again, I said this already. Um, I think I'll skip over it. Better not. Definition of an abstract logic. Again, to say that a logic is absolute is to say that its truth definition considered as primary predicate in the language of set theory is actually the premise of the class. Okay. Definability of a model class. This is, uh, so uh, where do model classes come from? Tarski, of course, introduces the concept of an elementary class. So this refers to the class of all models of a given first order sentence. Uh, so these are structures of the same vocabulary closed under this one. That's an elementary class. And then um, <clears throat> people just started, they got rid of this idea of being, taking the defining sentence of chronologic, just thinking about model classes. Okay, classical groups, low well orders. If phi is a sentence of any logic whatsoever, class of models of phi is Okay, let's see if I'm ready. A model class doesn't necessarily come with a syntax or a logic, right? So I want to make, and this is a problem I've had from many years talking about these things, that let us not confuse the vocabulary of the class. For example, if we consider the class of groups, it comes with, a, with an associated binary operation, a paper, identity element. That's not a syntax. This is the similarity type of the vocabulary. Okay. We talked about the Lindstrom quantifiers, so you've seen you've seen this already. Every model class is defined by Lindstrom. Okay. So just to say, just to recap where we are, we're trying to make a case that the distinction between first order. The second order logic is not as sharp as uh, 
becomes a generally thought absoluteness in part of this. And there are other other things you can say about this that I will say. Okay. Now one very uh, one very important distinguishing quality uh, quality this property distinguishing first and second order logic is the second order logic is famously absolute. Can easily write a second order sentence. Non absolute. Non absolute. Sorry. Non absolute. Absolute. Uh, which is which is true in uh, uh, real closed fields if and only if C H holds false otherwise. So uh, again, thinking about this um, remark of Klein and this kind of whole campaign against second order logic, so much so that it was considered very important when Shapiro and others. Uh, started writing about second order logic in the studies or the books or something, advocating second order logic as a foundation. This was seen as something revolutionary because the Kleinian campaign <laughs> against second order logic has, was very, very effective. Uh, and again, it is driven by this idea of metaphysical commitment, set theory being metaphysically heavy and so on. And this was a very bad detail to uh, in philosophy on the foundation. Okay, anyway, the non absoluteness of second order logic must have to do with the set theoretic, with its set theoretical content. But how do we think about the set theoretical content of second order logic? Here's I'm going to bring out there goes symbiosis again. So this was, uh, uh, as Yoko reports in a couple of papers that he's written about this. It was designed exactly in order to make the set theoretical content of the logic explicit. So, in other words, to measure the or calibrate the uh, set theoretical content of the uncover the set theoretical commitments. That's it. Okay, so in the previous talk, uh, I, I used it to think about the problem of finding a natural syntax for a class. So this, I think, is Scotland, right? So here's the model class, and then somehow, we're very used to this, a logic kind of grows up out of the class, uh, a logic and the syntax, but the question I asked the previous talk was how, how does that happen in a natural way? How do you think about that question? Okay. So here I want to use it for the proposition that set theory can be viewed as a logic, and in fact it's the strongest one. So I will I will define all these things for you, but precisely in symbiosis, you find the set theoretical predicate of operation P, such that in any situation where P is absolute, the logic is, and vice versa. So speaking very well, as I said, I will define this for you. This means that one is able to detect on the one hand whether logic sees the invariant content of a given predicate, while on the other hand, the absoluteness of the logic is pinned to the absoluteness. So that's what symbiosis is. It's a kind of two-way beneficial relationship. Okay. So what comes out of the analysis is that the second order of logic is not absolute because it's symbiotic with the power set operation, as I said, as I said before. That is to say, once we hold the power set operation fixed, second order logic becomes absolute. On the other hand, second order logic sees the power set operation and can talk about it and everything else that is absolute relative to the power set operation via its definable bottom class. I will make this precise. This may seem very <laughs> Okay. Of course, this is not surprising. This is, in some sense, the expected result of the correct result that the non absolute and so second order logic have to do with the power set. So, this is the right outcome. Okay, so here are these ingredients I've been talking about keeping the power set operation fixed. So, we said predicate is R absolute if whatever we have sets to the universe takes sets away without changing R. Also, P remains to change. So, if I think about the predicate X, X is countable, then being uncountable, being uncountable ordinal, and so on, these are all going to be absolute with respect to R. R is 
Technically, this is the same. So I say predicate P is absolute with respect to R or absolute. R absolute if it's delta one R. That is the one down. with respect to one theory. The extended language epsilon R. But the theory is uh, or just formally. Uh, so I have a predicate in the language set theory. <coughs> And I have a uh, phi one in the sigma one formula that that the predicate that the extension of the phi one formula in the sigma one formula. Okay. So, so if I have if I have uh, another predicate, mm -hmm. so I'm working in set theory. Mm -hmm. I have another predicate. So I say that the predicate P is absolute with respect to that predicate if it's delta one. What Matthew means is that delta one means sigma one and pi one, but they have to be true equivalent. Probably so. And yeah. Usually it is yeah. Yeah. Probably, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes K B with the not prepared is probably C S C. And sometimes in B. Mm -hmm. so okay. It's just a true. Okay. okay, here's the delta operation which I mentioned last time. So if I have a, uh, a model class of, of some vocabulary tau, I say that the class is sigma L star definable if there's a bigger vocabulary tau prime and a sentence in the vocabulary, a sentence of L star in the vocabulary tau prime, such that the model class is a class of redux of models of pi. It's delta L star definable if L is one. Okay. So, maybe I should go think of also probably, mm -hmm. but now it is as it is stated, it's just in B. Okay. It just happened to be. Okay, so I, I add relation symbols. I consider the expanded language. I have a sentence in, in this expanded language, and the model class is a class of three dots. Sentences in that logic. Okay, and again, uh, this preserves so the delta closure of a log of a logic. It preserves compactness, axiomatizability down to long line numbers. Right? So it's a very, very good operation in that sense. Filling the gaps left by explicit, explicit definability, and so on. For example, the infinite, there are infinitely many x such that phi of x. So this adding this to first order logic, you can express that an equivalence relation has infinitely many equivalence classes, although morally you use all those favorite uh, favorite uh, locution, it should be able to do so, where you can say that. Okay. So the delta closure of a logic is really what the logic should be when some accidental weaknesses. Okay, so here's a definition of symbiosis, slightly different from the one I stated before, but it's going to do the same thing. So we have a predicate. So we're thinking here about set theory, power set operation. Here we have logic, or symbiotic. If every L star definable model class is absolute with respect to R, and conversely, every model class which is absolute with respect to R is definable in delta closure. So that's what we have. We already mentioned uh, the symbiosis between second order logic and power set, the Hartley quantifier which talks about uh, 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 cardinality. Uh, so it, it's, you will have typically two sentences, and then the idea is the extensions have the same cardinality. That's the hard to or the cardinality quantifier. Uh, that is symbiotic with the uh, card. OK, so here's this chart again. First order here, first order here. Right? This is um, 
Again, last time we talked about the difficulty of finding a syntax for a model class being calibrated. Uh, uh, that symbiosis will sort of calibrate that for, for you. Here, um, I'm, I'm using it to argue that if you view first order logic, or, or sorry, if you view first order set theory as a logic, how would you do that? How would you unpack, unpack that? Well, then the logic that it is, quote unquote, should be sort of logic. And I'm going to tell you now it's sort of logic. Picking up logic, thinking of set theory as a, as a logic. So this is going down in the strength of the logic. Huh? Yeah. Here I have first order being symbiotic with this very weak fragment here. So theory. Here's second order logic. Symbiotic power set operation. And here we have a symbiosis between the same core sort logic and first order. Okay, and again, this was this inside outside view that I've been talking about. Okay, so as I said, the dogma here or the suggestion here is that set theory is the strongest logic. So, in order to unpack that um, via its symbiotic connection with sort logic. Okay, so now I'll tell you what sort logic is. <clears throat> so uh, we have the standard conception of a model with uh, a domain and relations, functions, and so on on that domain. A modification is a many sort of a structure in which there are several domains, uh, relations, functions, and constants of those domains. Okay, we have a sort variable, many sort of logic, we have a sort variable ranging over those separate domains. For example, vector spaces, we can think of that as a two-story, many-storied structure, a sort of scalars and a sort of vectors. So, right, every, um, we have these sort variables, and again, um, these are uh, ranging over elements of the domain of that sort. Sort variables, and then we have domains attached to those. Okay. So here's a picture, model and a many sort of logic. Sort logic arises when we're allowed to quantify over a variable of a new sort, that is to say, a sort that's not present in the vocabulary. So semantically, this means we claim there's a new domain that can be added as a new sort into our model, and the expanded model satisfies what we want. For example, if I'm a group, I can ask, Am I the multiplicative group of a field? Right? So uh, such things can be expressed. Sort logic. So again, first order, many sorted logic. The sort logic is uh, a higher order, many sorted logic. That's what it is. So if we think about first order, many sorted logic again, the idea of a vector space. We have sort variables for each sort, each domain. In second order, many sorted logic, we have uh, relation symbols for each, each such ranges over subsets of individuals of some sort. Now, if that, if the domain of that sort is already in the model, then this is just second order logic. In a model which doesn't yet have a domain of sort MI, the quantifier is still done, is defined, and means that I can add a domain to the model and call it the domain of elements of sort and I, and there's a subset of the new domain which satisfies the new model fine. And so here's this picture I showed you before. So what I just said is a mouthful of this is just so you're allowed to, so here in second order logic, you can guess a subset of the domain in front of you. Here, you guess a domain, you guess a new sort, and you're allowed to guess a subset. Okay. So we you can guess a new domain and we guess a subset. Well, second order logic only allows us to guess subsets of the current domain. So now we can make sense of this inside outside talk that you've been hearing for a couple of hours now. 
So, for example, in sort logic, we can guess a model of set theory where our current model is an element. So we guess it in a domain, and then we guess a binary predicate on the new domain, which stands for the epsilon relation of the domain. We demand that the new predicate has to be well bounded, satisfies the maximums, and so forth. Finally, we can say that the transitive model has an element which is isomorphic to our current model. So here, all, all of this results in the idea that we can look at our current model and the new model as if we were outside. So it makes sense of this inside-outside talk. And this sort logic creates a bridge between the inside and the outside. So about the symbiosis between sort logic and first order set theory, this means that in this case, symbiosis means that every model class definable by a sentence of sort logic is definable in first order set theory, and conversely, any model class definable in set theory by a first order formula is definable in sort logic. So this means by sort logic is the strongest logic, and thus by symbiotic correspondence. Too. Another way of saying this, if you view set theory as a logic, then the logic that it is, is your model. So it's this idea of allow yourself to guess a domain outside the model and you can guess something of the domain. That's set theory following the set theory. So Yoko's work with Barbaria on this, on getting reflection principles and so on. As I said, you can calibrate Use it to calibrate the set theoretic content of the logic. You get reflection principles, complexity of the decision problem of the logic, and so on. Here goes theorem that uh, the set of validities of second order logic is a complete phi to Okay, so symbiosis lays down a bridge between the inside and the inside. Other ways to complicate the first order, second order distinction. So if we think of Lindstrom's theorem, which characterizes first order logic in terms of certain canonical model theoretic properties, compactness and law and common school. So again, just to put that absoluteness, if we want to use that model theoretic characterization, to single out first order logic, it doesn't do a very good job because some strong, strong logics come very close to being first order by having those, those properties. So for example, by for example, the logic may satisfy Backman's theorem and have a down downward long time scale of some term, some some point, maybe not for accountable, but okay. So for example, co-finality logic. Q omega cof x y phi x y says that phi defines a linear order of cofinality. This is, this logic is very close to being first order. It's fully compact, and it has long times fallen down to L of one. But if you use uh, if you use that quantifier, if you build a constructible hierarchy based on that quantifier, you get a different inner model from that. So all of a sudden you jump outside of the So, uh, and on the other hand, there are, for example, the magic normalics quantifier will not give you a new inner model. And yet, the magic normalics quantifier is consistently badly compact, badly incompact. So, by the Lindstrom characterization, characterized in the logic of its first order quantifiers, magic normalics is very far from first order, and yet, L reads it as being first order. So, um, so there's a kind of uh, uh, the list of characterization kind of mischaracterizes logic. So we've been talking with Boban. You can characterize a logic as L tame if building the uh, constructive building the, the, the constructible hierarchy with that logic doesn't give you a new inner model. So that's L tameness. So there's a question of characterizing the l chain logic, or if you like. So the reason there's a nice little uh, lemma here. Um, if you use this quantifier to construct L, you pick up zero sharp. So that's why you better know your model. So, so there's a question. Characterize the logics 
but a building L of those objects in substitution. Any questions? Okay, so so this is another. So again, there are strong objects which are very close to being first order in their model theory properties. Interesting inside our momentum characterization, it's not tracking the first order second order. This in terms of in context. Okay, I'm not going to talk about internal categoricity, but uh, just briefly, this is another way that first order and second order logic uh, distinction becomes complicated. So, so here's the, right? Suppose we have two structures satisfying first order piano. Suppose the induction in the induction schema, um, I guess induction uh, and, and yeah, we're talking about in, in induction. Um, you can mention either, so you can mention both um, uh, the operations of both models. So this is what, right, the two models can kind of shake hands in, in that sense. Then there's a formula in, in the common vocabulary or in the union of vocabulary, which defines an isomorphism in the structures. This is called internal characteristic. Very interesting. Okay, I just want to end uh, with the meta theory property. So this is something very simple. Um, <clears throat> this might be a meta theory. Thinking about the first order, second order distinction from the form. So if we say that second order logic can express well foundedness, we're saying that there's a sentence, second order sentence, so that for all models, M A is well founded if and only if. And A satisfies five. <coughs> Here, and uh, left hand side, I mean, how do we think about this left hand side? Well, we can put the second order thing on the left hand side, but that's, that's would be back to so that's a problem. So here we have second order statement satisfaction of a second order sentence. Here we have something informal. So how do we think about that? Well, Probably most people would say that we should use a set, set theoretical definition of well founded on the left hand side. But then, how would we understand the set theoretical uh, statement that this structure is well founded? Well, we, we derive it from the axiom. Okay? So we uh, work in first order set theory and we derive the statement. Let's do the same with the right hand side. So here's the second order statement, right? Again, if we, uh, uh, we don't want to put the set theoretical definition here, if we want to really understand what this means, we use the axioms of second order logic uh, to define the meaning of second order logic. What we really want to do is uh, think of second order logic as a two sorted first order logic. So this is second order logic of the Hankins semantics, which is completely absent of present. Why? Well, the, the thought here is if we want to make sense of this, we need a complete proof system. If we make sense of this axiomatically, if we have a completeness serum for the uh, second order logic of Hankins. So we're really back into first order logic again. So we either understand the second order statement in terms of first order set theory, or we understand the second order statement as a statement in two sort of first order logic. That is to say, second order logic. Same thing in semantics, because if we're proceeding axiomatically, we want a phenomenal logic. We want a logic that is, um, has, for example, a completeness. So either way, we're falling back into Okay, so what have I said here? that a first order logic alone is very weak, but when we find an epsilon, something magical happens, it becomes the strongest logic. Second order logic is thought of as a logic, shouldn't we think of first order set theory as a logic too? If we do, then it's the strongest logic. It's, um, and, and what kind of logic is it? 
Well, it's a many sort of the, the, the many sort of logic with the variant. As for the question how sharp the first order second order logic is, if we insist on absoluteness with the marker of canonicity, we're not going to single out first order logic. If we think of the Lindstrom characterization of first order logic in terms of model theoretical properties, again, we're not going to single out first order logic, or at least not very sharply. Of course, there is there is a divide in the uh, There's an internal categoricity complicating the first order second order distinction. And there's a symbiosis story. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question. Okay. I don't want to be the first one. Well, I'm going to talk to you more. Give me the second. This is the second question. So we started with the second. <laughs> no, but it was a. Uh, if you were talking to category theories, how yeah. would you. Um, how yeah. Would you address it? They don't see any uh, structures, they're all bumps I mean, and errors. Yeah. So there's no distinction. It's so this is. Yeah, yeah. So this is something I'm working on, uh, we're starting to work on now. Um, that, uh, I mean, so people point to these syntactic categories uh, as being kind of modeling syntax screeners, but it just looks like what you do you take a category and you equip it with enough information more to, to talk about interpretability clearly. They have a story about syntax readings for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it's as I say, it's something I'm just beginning to study. Yeah. 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 So I talked about this uh, with Samson. So every category has a unique optoisomorphism, unique natural numbers. So that's like a like a second order optimization of natural numbers. Uh, but this so is a, you mean every top or so every What that? What did you say? Uh, not every top of the have a problem number. Well, you may need the top ones to make sense of you know of the uniqueness, but but if you define the natural numbers, in a, you only need a Cartesian category, and then you define it as a universal object with respect to the uh, diagram. And then any two objects with that property, you, you, you don't combine it, and you get that there's an item of uh, But, um, um, so that to me seems, seems like a second order um approach in outside category but um uh, but but then there are categories which have they don't have their own natural numbers but the natural numbers need not be isomorphic across the category so inside the category is unique but if you have another category it may have a different natural numbers I mean completely different so so, so what does that have to do with the stories if you think of second logic as it's sort of empty here in like hanging a model so two sort of language then of course with the hanging models inside one hanging model there's only one natural number but you can have two different hanging models which have non isomorphic natural numbers so it, it seems a little bit similar in category but i'm not really an expert on that and so what i meant is um, you know we think of a structure, it's some kind of a box, and there's some elements there, and there's some equation, functions, and so on. And so we look inside, and we see whether something is true or not. But if you're a category, I know it's kind of ridiculous, but it <laughs> <doubt> me. 
But if you are category theories, then no, there is no content. It's not about the content of the box. It's the relation between the boxes or the arrows. So from a category theory <coughs> point of view, it doesn't even make sense to talk about the first order or second order. Mm -hmm. Of the more type of balance, but not the yes. more uh -huh. yeah. maybe make that I'm constricting a pattern to now from prime and second order of the problem. So, can you tell us about it? By whom? Not much. But do you remember the other? Yeah, I can check on more. Okay. Yeah. On the Okay. So, so, uh, 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 so if you don't care, you know, like, do you like mean like literally people caring for doing something because you're not doing something that involves first, involve first or second order distinction? Then of course it doesn't involve first or second order distinction. I like I think that your question has to be deeper in some way, but it's very hard to make. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I don't even know. I mean, I, I'm making myself just for the purpose of this question, and I would be curious, and I'd say I don't know what this is for. <laughs> but I don't know what there are no elements of my stuff. I don't care about elements, I care about errors. Okay, well, yeah, yeah, so much, yeah, so they they can say that uh, the category is first order of common science because uh, uh, the domain is the is to sorted objects and arrows. And then I impose relations on it. I mean, as a category, uh, okay, that's not for the. Uh, I mean, uh, that's, that's, yes. But then, you, you know, it obviously doesn't mean what you literally ask. Because, you know, like, literally, if you're doing something that doesn't involve the distinction, you know, like, why do you. Why do I like, no, the, no, but the structure is entirely not by its content, but like the elements is not, but how its relation to others. Like, for example, math. <laughs> Yeah, but then, like, yeah, I get the impression it's really about you know, something. What if I don't really believe in uh, the foundations of math as defined in secular or first order logic? Since I mean, uh, if you go to some some of yes, yes. yes. for some time, I don't believe that I don't believe that you that I can access what you're saying. But then I think that this position would have to be first formulated in a way that would really allow for this question, because for all of you now. You know, like the, the reason why we, you know, if you the, the reason why the way people actually are doing it for here is that, you know, they're not just postulating that you have categories of this and this, but you first have to get different examples of these categories. So why, why do I even have this category? And the ultimate resort you're doing is still because I can still get the in, theory? In, yeah, like, you know, like you don't postulate have a category and satisfy this and this and this and there we go. Like the ultimate reason why, you know, like, how I think they, they want to get to each of the set theory. No. I mean, yeah. maybe they want, but you know, it's. <laughs> I mean, isn't this a kind of mantra that the natural logic of the topos is intuition and framework? The theory is weaker than yeah. material the theory. So yeah. One you can that. attach a logic to a pattern. Let us see if the. Or maybe structural logic is not. You know, but, you know, but, yeah, you think that somewhere in the concept space there is this category here which could be you know, like really surface foundation, but yeah. the current matter of statement that you don't start for three pure and you like this category because those pure so in this category the pure works. And you know that every mathematician would ask, okay, so how do you know the category of those properties exist? And the only legal proof would be but the construction is a theory. Yeah, it's no, it's no, but they no, but it's, I I would agree with you. <laughs> Um, <coughs> what you said, but they, I heard people say, no, no, we don't need to be at all. Yes, there, there was uh, attempted maximization in the 70s of, of, of uh, category, completely category, but like we started first with category theory. But then, uh, you know, as a matter of actual fact, at this point, we, we do have consistency and construction of the of piece of the time was as a piece of theory. So I should have, so you know, as a set theory, you should ask, well, why should I care about your foundations in your defense of mine? <laughs> and on the other hand, uh, you know, like there is no 
Yeah. I think that if someone proposed some first order category theory starting with categories of true names, something that yeah. happens again with some theories that just end because of the <laughs> because of the for reasons yeah. 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 your theory is consistent, then we start up. Yeah. Right? So you think they don't have an index? No. Okay. Like, okay. And they show that they actually. Okay. 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 Maybe some are talking about that's not quite right. Right. Especially in electric energy, we can like some our laws. Yeah. We can have like heat press. Then you end up with you know a bunch of electric to explain why you can do this. So maybe you know maybe the alternative universe already not some not the same future. We do have like the foundation started from the point of view of considering for a gentleman moral point of view was actually formulated within contemporary theory. And then, you, and then the, if this is an true and take off the complementary application, it starts to become valid. Okay, but what if you, for example, want to do only one topic theory? Then you can just leave in the modern category, which is a universe for the when you can first in the same much. What, 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 what kind of what kind of measures? Well, it's like the real number, say, it's pretty show. I have my yeah, but the yeah, but I like I have like a very, very legal and other story. So in this study of the group, what makes the solution is still like precisely because it's the not only the theory, but they want to dispense it and they block it. We say come. For consistency, I think I mean so, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so uh,